already. Move the towel off. You don't want it in the, in the shot. Gotcha. Just like on your lap. Is it? Cool. Got your gold chain looking like smoke dog. <laughs> 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 Cruising down the street in my six four. <laughs> my name is Chris Beckett. I am 31 years old. Recently diagnosed with ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, um, uh, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. I currently live in Los Angeles, California, and I'm putting together this video to raise awareness for ALS and try to promote it so more people get a better understanding of what this disease is and what it can do for people. Uh, also to help with fundraising just because this disease is very expensive in terms of the 24 hour care that is needed down the line once uh, abilities start to deteriorate more and more. Uh, like that cheesy smile, I'll do it again. I want to thank everyone today for their support of... You know, support doesn't work. I want to thank you everyone. Yeah, we're filming. No, I'm just kidding. The last one's always the best. It is though. Chris is for his birthday when his cousin came into town and we couldn't find him or his cousin and then we found Beckett kind of half falling asleep on the bar and we asked him where his cousin was and he said he didn't know but that he wanted to leave and so we left without his cousin. <laughs> <laughs> There have been so many new things going on in my life. As you can tell, I now use a speech device to speak with people. I had always been aware that this transition would be one of the more difficult parts. It certainly has been very challenging in terms of mentally and emotionally navigating. I have had to learn to rely on my speech device because it would become frustrating when people could not understand my voice. With ALS, it takes away your ability to move, takes away your ability to speak, and eventually it's going to take away your ability to breathe on your own. So within that time period of two to five years, all of that's going to occur. So you essentially can't move, can't speak, can't anything in that way to where you're locked inside. You're imprisoned within your own body where it's just you and your mind. And that's what comes down to having a strong mind and meditation and anything to be at ease and be at peace for your own well-being is critical. Right now, the person I depend on the most is my fiance Taylor. She is, for better or for worse, with me 24-7. I know she loves it. So she helps me with so many things, whether it just be prepping food or helping me shower or helping me shave in the morning. She is the person that I depend on the most, and especially for emotional support when I'm having a bad day. She's always there to listen to me, help get me through things, and she's really, she's a rock for me. She is a rock. She is a very important person to me, um, and she means the world to me. How do you feel when she's not around? <clears throat> I don't know if I've thought about it. It's different. I've become very used to having around and someone that is my best friend, 
my everything. It's very, I love having her around. Yeah, I guess I don't like spending too much time away from her. She's kind of cool. He loves everyone. Um, I think he's embodies the saying of there's good in every soul. Um, he will find it and, and he'll bring it out of people. Uh, I think he makes everyone around him a better person. And that's more than I could say for, for myself. Um, Just a sweet word The table is prepared for you beautiful thing about Chris there's so many <laughs> I can't decide it sounds not cliche I think anyone who knows him would agree that it's his positive spirit mm -hmm. and I say that and it sounds so generic or cliche but if you know or have met Chris you have probably felt that positivity and how he has uplifted so many people around him. Um, when he's faced with a hard time, when he's frustrated, when I'm frustrated, he can always pull us out. And not that he's not a realist, but he takes everything and can see the positive. And I think that's the most pure characteristic a person can have. Mm -hmm. It's something I don't think I've met in anybody, or I've seen in anybody that I've met. Yeah, I agree with you. He's a special person. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you guys express love for each other right now? And has it changed? Mm -hmm. Very good question. He will type on his Toby can I hold your hand? <laughs> yeah. And it's like the sweetest, most romantic thing is just to hold his hand. He can't reach for mine, so I have to grab his and interlock our fingers. And it's something that I think most couples take for granted, but every second that we're holding hands is that touch that we don't get naturally. Um, and then it's, it's so much touch because that's what he's lost. Yeah. It's pressing my cheek against his when I'm holding his head, when I'm hugging him. Mm -hmm. um, it's that warm feeling, just knowing that that's what we used to do all day, every day. And now it's the special moments when we can touch. Yeah. Hug, kiss, hold hands. Oh. It's so simple. Yeah. But it's literally our most treasured moments now. And probably just so powerful. Yeah. Like it feels so powerful. It's a reboost. It's it gives us both like a really good connection and more energy to continue on our day knowing that we have each other's backs. I let go of my claim on you. It's a free world. You look down on where you came from. Sometimes. But you'll have the 
this place to call on Always This love He gave me a call like in July. We lived in Arizona at that time. We've since in the last month and a half moved out here to Los Angeles to be close to him and to help support him. Um, I had known about the symptoms for a couple of years. Things were progressively getting worse. So through the phone and through conversations, we knew things were wrong and they kept progressing. So when he called me, um, I guess I was kind of shocked because he's been through lots of tests and I thought ALS would be eliminated like multiple sclerosis and some other neuromuscular diseases. I thought it would be eliminated through the MRI. So I really thought we were out of the woods for the really crap stuff. Um, No, no. <laughs> but <clears throat> from the very beginning, he's like, it is what it is. And he's right. There's not much you can do about it. So, my goal is to have him live his life to the fullest. So whatever he wants, wherever he wants to go, I tell him he's a spoiled child now. Though he probably always has been, <laughs> being the number three. But that he, you know, I want to help him as much as I can to get whatever he needs to live the life and to enjoy it and his attitude is unbelievable and it's contagious and it's taught me to be more positive um, he's clearly taught me to be more patient because everything just takes so much longer and you know you want to help you want to rush you want whatever and you just take your time with ALS, it feels kind of like everything slowed down a little bit. I try to tell people it's, imagine lifting one of the heaviest things you've ever lifted. And for me, that's a sheet on a bed that I'm trying to get off when I'm trying to get out of bed. It doesn't necessarily create any pain for me. Uh, I still feel everything. As my friend once tried to find out, as he hit me on the leg, like, oh, do you still feel that? And, Yes, I do still feel pain, but it's more of looking at your hand and trying to grasp a pencil and your fingers don't move and they don't respond to what you're trying to tell it to do. Sometimes I think I'm in denial. So I'm always looking for hope and like hopefully it'll just be arms and legs and it won't progress because the disease takes different forms for different people. So I, I clearly have a huge hope for that. I don't think about the future. I just think about the here and now. You know, what can we buy? How can we fix? How can we make this easier for him? So I think that's kind of where my head is. Um, I want for him, I mean, I'd love to spend all sorts of time with him. I drive him nuts though sometimes. <laughs> Maybe more than sometimes, but he'll he'll just say, "Mom, mom," you know, like just relax, chill, whatever, you know. I want him to be with his friends and have fun. Okay. Are you good? Yeah. I'm good, bro. Come on. <laughs> ALS is a motherfucker. <laughs> you. Sounds <laughs> good to me. <laughs> Straight from the East Coast.
No matter what, I can still do the impossible. So we'll see. Whoever thought that if you had Alice, you could ever run again. And I'm doing it, maybe in a different way, but because of Bobby, I can call myself an athlete again. I may not always 
I wonder if you really 